Hey guys, Reed here. Today I'm going to be talking about this f of x symbol that you see floating around in the visualizations and the formatting some pain for a lot of visuals. Now it's peppered all throughout Power BI and there's a lot of different use cases for it. And if you click it, you get a menu that pops up like you see in front of you here that allows you to do some fancy magical formatting or some dynamic changes to a lot of different attributes to visuals or the page itself. So what I want to do is walk you through all of that and unveil the mystery of some of the really cool powerful effects that this might have in your report. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. Now for this video, I am going to use my waterfall comparison chart that has a couple of cool slices and other functionality. Now some of these features for this visual are out of scope of the f of x conversations for the effects button that I'm discussing in this video, but I will link you down in the description, link below, that will walk you through some other features of this. But for this video, let's go ahead and focus on the places where the f of x button and symbol can be used into here. So as an example, let's go ahead and select just two categories. Notice that everything is blanked out into here. So let's talk about item number one, which is colors. The f of x button can be used to change many different colors in a visual. I'm going to select this. I'm going to come over to the format pane, and I'm going to go to my y-axis. And you can see a couple of spots where we see the f of x symbol. Notice, by the way, for color right here. That is being used in this location. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this here. And you can now see that the title over here for the y-axis is now showing, or the data label specifically that I'm referring to. So I was using, if I click the back button, I was using a measure supplied in here to provide logic, in this case, for the field value where the, the y-axis start. And what I'm essentially doing in there is I'm doing a check in here to make sure that exactly two values are done using the measure. And I will actually just show you that as well. So I'm going to look for the y-axis. There we are. And come down to sales waterfall. And you can see into here, I have some logic. And I'll just show this one. The goal of this is really to show you locations for the f of x symbol, less about the actual measures themselves. But again, if you are interested in some of the complexities behind the measures, other video below, which walks through the waterfall chart. But this is more for the f of x symbol locations and the ways you can use them. But some basic logic being done into here, white and dark gray, to basically allow that to be, in this case, whited out. So if I click this, that is why that axis label is being whited out. The same thing I'm actually doing as well, if I continue to come down, I have my line color with that symbol there. So that is the primary thing that most of the time you see this for, is it does some type of color logic for visuals themselves. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this here. The next thing that you might notice is that the title is being dynamically changed. So that is another location that is commonly used with the f of x symbol. We're going to open this up here, and we'll see that there is a title text with an f of x symbol as well. So we clear out of that. And we can now see that title text can be included manually, or we can apply some logic. And again, I have a measure that, based off of some type of business logic, is checking to see that my conditions are being met. When I select exactly two, it returns a standard title. If I select less than two or more than two, various other titles will be shown to give the user a hint of what to do. So the title location is another common one. So that is another location and type of data that can be supplied using the f of x symbol. We've now seen that color codes can be supplied, and we can also now see that text, or titles in this case, can be supplied as well. You'll find that commonly in titles for the visuals, and another location that you'll see this commonly applied in as well is buttons, where the text inside of a button can also be applied. So, continuing the conversation, we'll now see the locations where we can apply number values. So coming back to the y-axis, we'll see that the start and the end ranges in here have options for the f of x symbol to apply a number into there. So I'm going to select this again, and notice that I have a slicer up here for dynamic. That means that it will supply the default for the waterfall chart, which is a reduced range that will zoom in onto the variances, but I can also now anchor this to zero. So I have a measure that is also applying the y-axis start. Just for the sake of entertainment, I will show you what that is. It really is just looking to see what type of selection I have from that slicer. And if that selection is dynamic, return blank, basically defaulting to the auto range, otherwise zero. So that's how I'm able to anchor it to either the default of a dynamic zoomed in range or the zero range. So now we've seen color. We've seen how you can apply to a visual a text, f of x magic button. We've also now seen how you can apply a number as well. So three different locations for it. Uh, additionally, as well, you also have an option for a constant line that can be applied into here. And again, 
there's an f of x symbol. So you can also apply a number into an analytics line onto a visual as well. So many different ways to insert numbers, text, or color values into a lot of different visuals. Now, all of these did evolve from the base conditional form name that used to just exist for tables. And what I'm referring to as an example is this table over here. Let's go ahead and come to the options down here, go down to values, and we have conditional formatting in here, and the background color, font color, that's where this initially started from and has since evolved to many other different visuals. But these are the base types of conditional formats that you can apply directly to tables or matrices themselves. But overall, there are many different locations that these are available in. I'm wanting just to give you a taste of some of the primary ways that you can apply it. And that really, again, boils down the three primary types that can be applied, which is color, which is text, and which is numbers. And they continue through the months and the years to add different locations for that symbol. So every time you see that the little F of X button, give it a look, see what you can do with it. There's just many different ways to add KPIs and logic to cards, waterfalls, tons of different native visuals that are all continuously supporting this further and further. Now, if you liked this video, I would recommend checking out some of the recommended videos up here. And otherwise, again, if you liked this, I recommend please subscribing or liking the video, commenting or sharing as desired. It helps out the channel a lot. But otherwise, I will see you all in our next video.